vocal screen. Uh, I know people complained that the sound wasn't good. Sorry, that's all we have in my computer. The speaker is going out. Too bad. Okay, so so November 13, 2018, team meeting. We're moving along. What's happening these days? Nothing much, except for a kid building today. Uh, so actually today, I received a package from Sarah from the California team and I will be testing the build of a kit. So we're, we're starting to sell kits. If you go to microfactory.opensourceecology.org, we're beginning on kit sales and we're testing these kits out to make sure they all work. I'm going to do a certification build today to certify Sarah to be able to, to produce kits. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on with that. The, the current build takes about six hours to do. And the mark of a good kit is that all the parts are there and a complete successful build up to a perfect print using the 3D Bench Benchmark 3D print can happen within about six hours. So that's uh, my duty for today. I've got my pr print cluster up and running in the, the Open Source Ecology head headquarters here, just four printers. Uh, I'm actually going to do some modifications. I will continue uh, actually re remounting the uh, x-axis in a different different configuration so as you see th this co construction modular set that we use allows us to mount things in a different ways so i'm actually going to do some higher mounting on the axis to allow for higher more z space uh, so some experiments coming up with that outside of the build uh, i do want to bring up also one point about professional development and let me share my screen here um, so sharing the screen so the thing that's happening for the first time in the history of OSE is is engaging in some professional development where as a product we also start OSE clubs in different locations basically positioning this as if you're an educator build a 3d printer earn professional development credit start an OSE club for STEM education, get involved with design that matters. So the first one is coming up the 23rd through the 25th, working with the London, Ontario event that's coming up. And that's the announcement here. But we'll do a first three-day training where we train people on free CAD and collaborative literacy to function as part of the bigger team, where the mentor leads weekly meetings for the students at their respective secondary school um, so that we can enhance some of the development and also do a physical build every quarter. So the, the current idea is to do a, an extreme build every quarter with the students. Uh, so that's, you can read more about it under microfactory.opensourceecology.org and just click on the professional development link. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks, first one ever. Um, that's, that's it on my side and just otherwise moving along uh, with the certification build for today. Um, <clears throat> hey, do you have any updates on on current progress? Now I see a little D3D PVC clamp. Uh, is that you want to update us on that? Uh, yeah. So yeah. can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I guess that started more on the clamp, and I kind of look at it uh, the axes and stuff, but I'm. Uh, done different simplification, trying to get those axis parts. The uh, yeah. clamp, I, I reworked it a bit, and it's at first, it, you know, I think it had to be thinner on the backside, and that was a problem. But it, I don't know the exact dimensions on that yet because that, I mean, the whole thing. I was looking at um, mm -hmm. a, a lot more build information, as you suggested, about the uh, printers in general and <clears throat> yeah. how to get the. Uh, Instruction on those simple because obviously you want it to be easy to produce in a workshop quickly. Uh, yeah. So the, the, some of the newer information about the printers was pretty helpful on that actually. Uh, oh, which information? About, you know. About, um, actually, I think it was stuff that Sarah and Alex are doing about. Uh, it looks like they're developing more detailed uh, some some notes on on construction uh, details for the printer or something. Um, okay. Yeah. That, some stuff about the rods and so on, uh, cutting. It looks like that, that there's some attention to detail on keeping the rods because uh, I assume that you're pre-producing a lot, you know, all the parts and you're cutting all the rods and those things ahead yeah. of time of workshops and all that. So that's like prefab stuff. But yeah. but even that stuff, you want to have a good, an easy, you know, method and and so on. And yeah. in general, with the PVC, um, 
just going by like the generated CAD that we have so far and so on, but it's there's a lot of imprecision in everything. But um, the the distances on that stuff are are going to depend on you know the thicknesses of the clamp and so on. But uh, can adjust the thicknesses of the clamp according to uh, what the rod length can be at the maximum between the, the PVC frame. But yeah. um, it. The thickness of the back end has some something to do with that. So I think it's closer to, to 14 inches. And the Z-axis, it kind of gets mounted in a different position in that case because, let's see, so the Z-axis can't be so long that it sticks down underneath, but it can stick up above. And I see that on other printers. So it'll mount in different holes. Um, see, I, re I reworked it. Um, Again, because I, I added the slots to the profile, yeah. and when I did that, it kind of I had to redo the the kind of the CAD. It skewed some of the other sketches, but I think that that's uh, I, I copied the, the sketches from the other parts, the original parts, and so on to keep all the dimensions for the holes, mm -hmm. um, which seem to be very detailed. So I assume those are accurate. I was kind of surprised. I don't, I couldn't tell that the dimensions on those plastic parts matched up with. Uh, imperial or metric measurements they just seem to be some uh very accurate parts and i assume they're <laughs> that way for a reason especially the holes but actually the, the parts in general are not exactly you know an inch or something like that uh -huh. or millimeters they don't seem to match up and i'm not sure why but uh, i assume that that's all that all works out with the current printing um and I'm, I'm trying to rework the axis uh simplify the right holes because the the um the axes off of the uh the, the cnc mill circuit mill uh were okay except they're actually a little bit too simple so they don't have enough holes to line up the, the clamp and so on um i think they just have the end holes but the end uh not the net control so we were in those that i simplified uh an axis a little bit differently with all the magnets and so on but i was wondering um let's see a few questions so the uh I think that the print speed, I don't know how much of that is an issue, but I, I think you want to maintain uh, as few unique parts overall as possible in general for the printing part. Right. But uh, technically with the PVC, if it's more efficient somehow, you can eliminate the magnet uh, recesses, I guess, but they might be useful for other things. And, of course, certain parts do have to happen still, I think, right? You still attach uh, certain things via the magnets. Uh, I don't know if the extruder... Or certain options, the the magnets are nice for optional to swap things out easy. But um, with the PVC clamp, uh, it could reduce or make other parts differently. I mean, it would simplify, uh, I guess, certain parts. I don't know if that's you know, necessary. If there's reasons to do that, there's pros and cons. So I listen to stuff about that. I don't know if they print faster, if they're simpler, if the actual STL is simplified if that matters but um the, the short idler also uh wasn't used in the um in the cnc circuit mill so i'm, I'm reworking that i think so i'm just going to eliminate the uh magnet holes so that uh that's that's as simple as i can i can make it i think and still assemble it uh with all the have all the bolt holes available um another concern with the clamp is how wide it needs to be. Obviously, all this stuff has to be thoroughly tested. As we said, the yeah. plastic, I've made guesses with this part, I think, about what the... I figured an eighth inch, I don't know how flexible an eighth inch of uh, PLA is with that curve above the, the pipe and the flexible that is. And some of these other... The other spaces, uh, like the notch, that could be narrowed, that could add some flexibility on the end. Yeah. Actually, I think the gap... I was going to increase the gap uh, in the, in the front where the pipe slides in because I think it's actually the width of the radius right now. I think I left it that way, which means there has to be quite a bit of displacement, and that's probably not necessary. I tried to position the bolt hole. Um, uh -huh. I, I hope it's depending on how precise it is. Uh, all this stuff could be so that the the bolt will be right, hopefully, up against the PVC or pretty close to it. So that that you know, hopefully there's some uh, that that eliminates motion. Hopefully, if the bolt is directly against the PVC, that would be 
ideal, right? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm I'm hacking your. If you look at the screen, I'm hacking your your yeah. clamp. Do you like yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There's a number <laughs> of ways it can, can be simplified. Um, I I edited a number of things on there, and I think I think I got the measurements. So there. Yeah, I'm like cutting away the sharp part, so I just did yeah. that. Yeah, that would um, be simpler. Um, and then connect these two points. Yeah. Why using your? Yeah, I think um, I got it. it yeah. was a little harder to edit earlier, and I think I got it a little easier. But there's a lot more complexity to the sketch now than originally. But mm -hmm. um, there are too many things, and I thought too if it it could be widened if it that makes it more stable. And obviously, I, I think you know a certain width would be stable enough. But obviously, if there's an issue, you could add the second. Um, a second bolt for three bolts, or I don't think you would need four bolts, but I, I don't know how uh, yeah. likely well, much vibration is on that. Just the width of the plastic clamping on the pipe with a single bolt, uh, if it needs to be a little wider, that might make increase stability if that's an issue. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Um, but I know that it makes uh, a much larger uh, color print. Um, Let's see. Actually, now I'm trying to think how the uh... yeah. So that part actually has to be split into two parts. I I forgot about that, but yeah. So yeah, it could be mid wider. So technically, that is two pieces because of the uh, coin, uh, the bolt hole at the back, mm -hmm. um, the neck. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing I was trying to remember. You said about the the bolt. The bolts obviously have to be some length longer depending on um, the thickness there as well. So that that's another issue. Um, yeah, I got one question for you there. On the, on the bolt recess right here, um, how did you get that on a curved surface? Um, it, well, if you look at the, the tree over there, it's a cut. Okay. It's at the very top. I think it is a mount nut cut. Okay. So That's a if you show that, you'll see that yeah. it is an independent part that was a cut from that. I, okay. I used the nut sketcher. I just copied the sketch from yeah. the uh, original uh, axis parts. Yeah. The nut catcher, and I just repositioned that sketch. Nice. And, so and let me ask you then, this question then: Did you keep track of the length of how far that? bolt goes in so it actually ends up properly in the nut catcher of the um uh, no or it goes through the right length through the it, axis piece that the, the thickness of the back there where the bolt goes through that's uh, a variable i've got it at a half inch and i haven't okay. assembled it to test i estimated what what i think i think it, it makes the rods about 14 inches but i hate for these things to come out on weird lengths you know like having to cut the rods they don't have to be perfect but it's much simpler right. if you can remember that the rods are going to be cut to 13 and a half or 14 inches or 13 and three yeah. quarters or something like that let me but, ask you um, let me ask you this because the depth, the, I think, yeah just to guide you on this a little more so when you do the depth of that hole you need to make sure that you're using like currently we are using 30 millimeter bolts right so the 30 has to go through the printed piece the carriage or whatever not the carriage more like the idler or motor piece and it has to go in there and has to end up within the nut catcher so you just remember that this has to go through a an axis piece and it's a 30 millimeter bolt so were you aware of that yeah the okay. bolts to uh the yeah. back of any axis exactly uh, including yeah it's got to go through yeah either the access holes that are available or uh, and in some cases it has to go through uh holes in relation to the motor side uh that's a little more complicated because that requires um i was looking at some pictures i saw you posted earlier of some of that and i noticed you don't use uh you're not even using hex and uh, uh bolts necessarily and so on so the the neck catcher technically doesn't matter, but it, it's a good thing to have there as an option. Um, but yeah, I'll have to look at 
it's going to be hard to figure out the length because I, I think that some of those bolts, I don't know that it's the bolts that go through the motor. It's, it's on the Z axis, since the motors on all the printers, you always put the motors at the top, I noticed, instead of the bottom, which I think works out better for various reasons, obviously. But the Z axis in particular is going to stick up a ways, and if it's like closer to 14 inches, so instead of mounting the clamp at the very end of the axis part on the motor side, it needs to go like at the bottom holes uh, instead of the holes on the top at the very end. So I, I'm not even sure which, I have to figure out again how the motor uh, mounts there. I don't know what bolts that is, but they'll, they'll have to be longer bolts to go through whatever thickness of plastic the clamp is. So um, to figure that, that thickness out in. I'm hoping that the, whatever those the slots on the end there added, I had a nut catch out there. I hope those will hold whatever nut or, you know, bolt options will work there just in case uh, yeah. there's any relation. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, ideally there, we'd want to, yeah, 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 use one of the bolts that we have. So a 30 millimeter. <clears throat> so try to make it fit a 30 millimeter. So maybe recess the, uh, maybe put like a part of a nut catcher on top but we we don't want to do 30 millimeters and currently like measuring what you have you have let's see you've got it's about one and a half inches so in order for an existing bolt to fit in you'd have to um, maybe like make that whole location closer can be maybe on the top top surface it, it has to be kind of down closer to each other Okay, so the bolts yeah. are a little short. Yeah, I didn't. Hear that. Well, because so we don't want to add that we have to use now a two-inch bolt, which we don't have yeah. in the BOM. We have thirty millimeters, which is one and a quarter. Okay. So that needs to be a little shorter. Yeah. Uh, unless we want to use more parts. Or, um, it's concerned a little bit with the thickness of the plastic. But yeah, that whole that whole end there can be. Yeah. Um, yeah simplified. Uh, I, I don't know how strong that PLA will be over. Yeah, we could do like, you know, and so on. if you print 100%, that can be quite strong. Yeah. yeah. The issue with that, of course, is it needs to be really flexible, too. So, uh, right. That, that, and that's the, the question on that. It's experimental. Um, it's going to require some experimentation. Right. But, yeah, so, hmm. yeah, I was going to... I think that opening needs to be increased in the yeah. pipe, and it, especially think, yeah, if the bolt do. is right up against the pipe, then that opening can be a lot wider. It doesn't need to hold uh, around the PVC as much if the bolt is right up against the PVC. Right. It does make a challenge for how the, the existing bolt that we have would fit, uh, but try to make it fit with the existing bolt. If not, we might just have to go to longer yeah. bolts, but hopefully not. Because there's a contradiction yeah. there, like, you still have to get this thing around the the PVC while, while yeah. using a 1.25 inch bolt. So I think I think it's doable, but we have to engineer it. Yeah, yeah, I'll look at that. That'll be interesting. Um, so let's see, what else? Um... Yeah, I wasn't sure about simplifying the. I assume keeping yeah as few parts as possible and and so on for supply chain on the, on the bolts, right. but also the on the plastic. Um, I don't I don't know if you'd want to actually make different uh, print different style of plastic parts for the PVC than the other because that just I don't know that there's any advantage to removing uh, magnet holes or something on some of the parts. Does that print faster? Initially, it was to use magnets, and it's still valid. I mean, yeah. we're not using a lot of the magnet holes right now, but it doesn't make it invalid because you can still mount it magnetically in other applications. So we're we're kind of working with the universal construction set, so the holes there are still useful for magnets. Yeah, yeah, keep the unique uh, part count for uh, printable parts low, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, I figured there's lots of, um, yeah, there's lots of stuff that needs to be mounted magnetically and, other things could yeah. be put on the printer that way too, but okay. on the PVC. Um, let's yeah. see. Yeah, I've been um, 
Let's see, I did uh, looking at some uh, uh, more Python and, and FreeCAD macro stuff the other day because I'm trying to uh, figure out how to make certain things faster that way and just generally trying to figure out how uh, to use certain FreeCAD functions better. Uh, I just need assembly two workbench to do some of the access stuff, but <laughs> never really run into problems with the assembly two workbench. And some people seem to have more luck, but uh, so I'm trying to figure out what works and what doesn't still, but it's uh, generally better just to use the, the methods of Defined. So, um, hoping to make some, some at least some macros that will ability to do certain operations that are common, like simplifying parts. I noticed. I think that's often uh, an issue for, for a lot of stuff. Like, I think you can make a macro that will um, uh, hopefully look at you know some part that you built in. You know, I don't know if you'll have to select the stuff or if it'll be able to figure out how to select the parts and then make a simplified part because there is a function built into FreeCAD that just makes a simple copy, uh, create simple copy on the part menu. So that's, I was trying to use the macro tool to figure out how that function works and it only works. Now I tried making a macro and it, it won't work from one file to the next. It, you know, if you record the macro, it's not generic. It, it says pocket you know, a particular pocket or whatever feature you previously selected uh, when you make the macro. So I'm going to figure out how to generalize that. Um, yeah. Should speed things up because I end up doing that often, uh, simplifying stuff, right? So yeah, more, good. more macros would be good. And... Okay. That's great. And it looks like, <clears throat> so let's keep moving. Let's move on. Um, so it looks like we've got more contributions uh, regarding the DC-DC converter. Um, so this is good. So actually, I'm reading the specs here. And it's not it's quite impressive, actually. 30 amp max current, a DC being changed from anywhere from 7 to 60 volts, then put an output, uh, changing by a factor of 2 part part cost of about $45. So that's interesting. And then, then we've got um, open source blueprints for that. So hopefully we can get this thing prototype. And what I see here, do we have an Arduino here? PWM controller. Um, do I see, is this an Arduino or not really? Doesn't look like it. It's an Arduino thing. Uh, it's a PWM controller. So using specialized chips for that. That's good. Good work. Um, no more updates on alignment filament maker. I, I would aim for a build here net within two weeks or so. Now, um, let's see. So Jen's on, online here. So Jen, any new thoughts on 3D printers? So last time we talked to Jen, we were discussing some issues like, like getting in for, like homeschoolers are definitely a good crowd for technical education, getting teaching people about prototyping, CAD, design, Arduinos. Um, how do we, what was our conclusion the last time that we were going to go and get ourselves approved by various state boards of, um, Jen, can you summarize that for us? Yeah, that we need to um, um, figure out which homeschool programs We'll give the we'll give the families money to buy these things to buy whatever we have that we're selling, mm -hmm. and then um, get onto their get onto their vendors lists. And I have not moved on that. I have been upticking my income and uh, studying for midterms and getting my butt kicked by Pi. But I just figured out what my problem was. But, but so I, have, by, I, I by haven't who? moved on that, and I haven't got um, I haven't got any assets done either for sharing social media. I've just been really, really slammed the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the best way to look at, so the, what we Google for marketing purposes is, so so for example, I go, go to Google and I say, Missouri uh, homeschool state program. Subsidized, try to state subsidized homeschool programs. You might have, we might have to go state by state. And subsidized means that the state is using some of its funding that it first has stolen from. Right, right, from right. Exactly. Citizens. Yes, it is. It is blood money. It is absolutely blood money. But it's blood money that's not being used 
to um, program sheep. It's blood money that's being used to deprogram people. That sounds like a good idea <clears throat> without being so it's, elaborate. It's, elaborate think yeah. think of it as, as subverting funds for, yeah. a, for a higher purpose. Yeah, but we're all nice guys here. So, so we talk all about, you know, working, not making any, any enemies and working together right. with everybody who wants, right. Right, right, right. wants to work right. with us. Right. And right. uh, but the idea is there that the state has funding. It, the state actually does fund homeschool programs, which is a kind of a cool thing, in the sense cool. that it's not not state education. It's private education by individuals who kind of take the education into their own hands for their children. Is that something that is relatively recent, or has that kind of funding been around for a long time now? Do you know? Um, it's not that recent in Alaska because of the way, you know, Alaska has always um, had a really, placed a really high value on education and it hasn't yeah. been a state very long and it's really hard to get teachers there and a lot of people live way out in the bush, you know, plus there's a lot of people in villages and stuff who might not be able to get teachers out there. Right. Um, so it, it was it was to meet the Alaska, the needs of the, of the citizens of Alaska and... Um, and I think primarily homeschooling through the state has been for, like, so the state doesn't have to pay to provide school for disabled kids. You yeah. know, a lot of disabled people end up homeschooling. But um, it, it, it's, it's gaining popularity. Right. So here I'm, I'm looking at um, ways to get I funds see. for homeschooling in different states, medium. Oh, interesting. And medium starts with Alaska. Well, because it's the first yeah. state. Uh, uh, the, um, the IDEA program in Alaska has been a model for a lot of states. Let's see if there's anything in the, the state of Missouri. Um, Missouri, yeah, in the St. Louis area. If you live in a city or in the country, you can go to a charter school for free. That's certainly right. I believe they're all, all lottery-based. Also, some of the St. Louis school districts are included yeah, in this. I've heard of homeschools being listed as charter schools, but that's not something that I have any experience with. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to find something here. Many grants help pay for homeschool. Uh, I'm not getting something okay, that's so really clear. I would Google. What have you got going? I just Googled Missouri Homeschool State Funded, and it came right up. Mo.gov, K-12 schools, homeschooling under Missouri law. Any family may choose to homeschool. Oh, there you go. So we'll go over there and see if you get money for it. Uh, is it the first link, Missouri homeschooling laws? A to Z homeschooling? No, no I just... Mo.gov, yeah, K-12 go schools. It's, 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 it's Missouri.gov. It's mo.gov backslash education backslash K-12 backslash. Okay. Yeah, I got it. So... Finding a school, homeschooling, yeah. Learning standards, resources. Do you see something there with respect to funding for homeschoolers? I see. Hold on. I am not. It's looking how to do it legally, withdrawing from school, complying, importance of record keeping. No. They're just saying it's legal in Missouri. So let me see. Which, mm -hmm. Let me try to search which states fund homeschooling. Enter Alabama. No. Okay. Ways to get funding for homeschooling in different states. Yeah. Okay. I. All right. I'll, I'll figure out which states we can get funding. Yeah. I probably, yeah. I probably this yeah. It will take a little bit of uh, market development. Would take a bit of time. So, um, yeah. So let's keep moving here. Um, yes. So I you, can think... feel, you can drop me an email and prompt me on this, Marchin. Oh, okay. Because I, it's, I just get freaked out and distracted about class and assignments and deadlines. And yeah. then I, like, get it done and then I calm back down. But I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, this is really tense. I had no idea school was going to be so stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, school is, uh, they take you to school, all right, in school. So, um, yeah, so I'd like to actually keep this meeting short today because uh, today I'm doing the build of, of a complete kit to actually get the video of the full build in six hours or so. So I got to get going on that before the day, day goes away. So I think, yeah, we'll get some good updates for today and we'll continue 
going. So yeah, let's let's plan on meeting again next week at the same time. Then I think that's that's about it for today. Unless uh, there's any other pressing info we gotta share. Yeah, I think that's it. So in two weeks, going to uh, London, Ontario, to do the first three-day immersion course for professional development. So that we'll see how that goes, and maybe that's a template for doing many more of these and develop OSC clubs in different locations, but we'll see how that goes. Looking forward to that quite a bit. Uh, you can take a look at it on the microfactory that opens our psychology.org. So, okay, so let's quit here. Um, so thanks for participating and viewing, and we will see you next week again. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Good meeting. Good meeting. Bye-bye, guys.